Hello, this is Christian. Welcome to episode two of this PHP uh, Stocks application using PDO. Now, um, let's go and see what our app looks like. Now, previously, this is the one we built. Um, as you can see, we already have the layout um, created. Again, I don't like the little thing here on the left side. There's a space here. The buttons are a little bit too um, not consistent. So let's uh, fix that really quick for us. It's a quick fix. I'm pretty sure we can just change them CSS in there. Um, and I realized that this one here should have been outside. Okay, so let's move that outside. That should be outside the main so that it will be um, left. There's no space on the left. Now the stocks. Let's change the LI. Uh, let's remove the padding from the LI. And we'll let the padding be managed by the, um, the anchor link. Okay, the anchor itself. So put padding here. Or maybe like a um, um, try 5px and see what that likes. And then we'll make it length to be consistent for all of them. I'll just use 100 pixels and see what that looks like. Okay, so let's go over to the browser and see that. So what I did was that basically, if you notice, if you ho hover this, right, it, it it changes the background color to white. You don't see that text because now I'm hovering over the LI and not the uh, HT at the, at the anchor tag. Right, so to fix that, you would you know remove all the padding from the LI, and then you let the anchor tag take over. Okay, so you make that fix, and you see it. Okay, that's good over here. Then now a little bit small now, but um, we'll change the padding, make it a little bit bigger, and uh, change the font size too. Well, you always do this here, it's just quicker. Um, just make sure everything works. I like my I like my stuff to be nice, so. Okay, so the padding five will make it um, maybe ten. We'll change the font size to be large, larger. Yeah, larger, and then the padding could go a little bit higher, I guess. Fifteen. Okay, and the width is a hundred and nine enough. So I'll put. Um... Oh, you know what? Yep. Again, it gets me all the time. You need to change display to say inline block. Okay, so there we go. Inline block should um, should fix that. And maybe the, the padding was too big. So if we go back to just yeah, five. Yeah, five should be enough. But the uh, font size, maybe we'll change it back to just large. Well, 150. Yeah, we use 150. Okay, so let's do that. We go 150 for the width, and then the display needs to say inline block. Okay, so that allows us to control the width and the height of our um, application. Okay, I think that should uh, solve it. All right, one thing I wanted to uh, just go over really quick. Oh, that's way too big. Uh, sorry. Yeah, back to 100. Um, is I want to go over the PDO for a second here, because the PDO is a, a, a it's a library of ex or extension to the PHP. So if you go over here to PHP.net and search for um, just PDO, okay, and uh, yeah, so the PDO which is, which is the PHP data objects. Now if you go up a little bit further, one up the database ex extensions, you see the, the overall picture here. Okay, so here PDO is one of these ab abstraction layers. And so down here you have the very um, specific uh, libraries for each vendor type. So PHP lets you communicate or talk to all these databases here using their own very specific driver. So we have been using mostly the MySQL because, you know, way back in the 90s when PHP was created, it was open source and, you know, a lot of people were not uh, used to the open source uh, community back then yet, um, but Linux was open source, and then came you know PHP, and then the MySQL database was open source, and so it was a perfect marriage between you know uh, Linux and Apache was also open source, and then MySQL and PHP and so on in Perl too. So that's why you have the a bundle of the LAMP stack, right? It's composed of these open source technologies, and so you see that when you think about PHP, immediately. The database uh, system that goes with that is always MySQL. Okay, but now as you can see, you can use all kinds of databases, including NoSQL databases such as MongoDB. Okay, 
So if you, if you are a MongoDB um, DB user, this is the library. Now these are very specific. So what that means is if you go to, for example, the Microsoft SQL Server, if you go here, you see that it has its own set of functions, all right? Looks very similar to the MSQLi. Uh, mostly you just basically change the, uh, you know, my SSQL to MySQLi and so on. Most of these are still the same, but not always. So if you go back to, um, say, SQLite 3, you see that it has its own sets of functions, very different, right? And if you know for sure that your light, your program is going to be using a very specific uh, database and you, you know, don't intend to change it, then yeah, that's fine. You can go to the very specific one. And uh, that's the advantage of that. Now, the PDO is like an operator that talks to about a dozen of these different types of databases. What it does is that instead of going to a very specific vendor, you talk to it through the PDO, and then because the PDO is a, it's a, a pretty standard set um, uh, layer, so it talks to whatever database you connect to. And so what, what that means is it will use the same functions. As you can see, all these functions will be the same for whichever database you talk to. And the uh, databases it supports at this time is these right down here. Okay, so you can see here. So you don't have to go through their specific vendor uh, driver. You just talk to it through the PDO, and then that will use the same functions. So when you write your code, you know, you can switch from, you know, MySQL Server to Oracle to uh, Firebird and so on. And without changing these functions, you just have to change the SQL SQL statements because each each server has its own, uh, uh, you know, sets of unique statements in addition to the NC standard. So, but still, you know, you end up with just using the same functions to save you a lot of time. And that's why we want to use PDO for this example, okay? All right, so um, here you have two very important classes, the PDO class itself, and you have a PDO statement class. Okay, so um, we make connections through the PDO class, and you can also make executables as well. The ex e e here is executable. You can execute a uh, query. You can also do um, to prepare, and then you also make the query. This one here and the execute kind of similar, all right? Um, except the difference is, is what it returns. So here you said it returns the number of rows affected. Here it returns, uh, it doesn't return that, right? It returns actually a PDO statement. Oops, here it returns a PDO statement object. Okay, and so whatever it returns, you have to kind of, you know, decide which one to use. Um, and down here, the PDO statement, these are usually used if you pass parameters to your queries. Like, uh, you know, you want to search for a specific ID or find a particular um, record that has a matching to a certain field of fields, then you use the PDO statements to do that because you want to, again, when you, when you prepare your query, after that, you have to use the statement to bind those uh, parameters either to a column, to the uh, a parameter, or to a value, um, those options, and then you can fetch them back as well. Again, the reason for this is, is for um, security reasons, right? You don't want to, uh, you don't want any uh, what's called the SQL injection to take place in your database, and that's really, really dangerous. And um, what does that mean by PDO? I mean, uh, um, SQL injection. That's another story. Uh, maybe if we have time, we'll, we'll do an example, but um, that's something we want to avoid. Okay, so. All right, let's go back in here and then let's start creating our database. Well, let's go to the config first. I want to put all my database information here in the config file. And again, usually you put that in outside of your uh, root directory so that it's secure. But for our example, uh, we'll just put it in here, okay? In a real application, you don't want to put it here. So I want to define some constants. The uh, host will be just the local host. And I'm just going to duplicate this Control D a couple times. I need the it, this is going to be the user, uh, the password, and I need a DB for a database. I need a table, so we call it table We're using stock, so table stock. And then here you have you need to put a driver, all right? We're using a driver, and then the driver here is whatever you, whatever database you want to use, like Oracle, MySQL Server, or MySQL and things like that. So ours is going to be just MySQL. We're using the MySQL uh, driver. Uh, 
we call it stock. This is just the, um, I think I call it her stock, something like that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we'll check it out. The password will be blank for mine, and then the user is just um, root. Okay. So um, let's see. I don't remember if I have it correctly. Let's go to the uh, local host. Um, then PHP my admin. Is it running? I must have turned off the. Um, yeah, I turned off the uh, the zap. Let's see. I want that to be turned on so we can access the database. Yeah, it was off. Okay, so let's go and try again. All right, so here we go. Yeah, I call it her stocks. Okay, so we have our fields all set up to go and uh, we are good. Okay, so let's go back. And then now this is done. <clears throat> and then oh, one more thing I want to check. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Now let's go to the DB file, and this is what we're going to define our um, a class, and then our PDO. So let's call it class DB. And inside here, we're going to have a um, a private variable. I'll just call it PDO. It's going to be null at first, and then I have another one for the DSN, all right? This is the DSN for connecting to our database. Um, just leave that blank for now. And so let's do our constructor, underscore, underscore, and then that will give us a constructor here. We'll do a, um, we'll set the PDN, um, DSN first. So let's go and create that object really quick. I mean, that setter and getter. And we'll do for, well, yeah, both of them is fine. Okay. So when I set the PDO, um, I'm going to do a connection, okay? I'm not going to set it here, we're going to call it a connection. And then also, well, before we do the connection, we're going to set the PDO, the uh, driver first. So I'm going to do a set DSN, right? And um, yeah, so we set DSN, you can pass in some data here. So initially, you want to pass this same information here. So basically, this information can be passed to that constructor, uh, just in case. Uh, or you can set it, it doesn't matter, but why not just do it here, right? So we can say dri um, driver is equal to driver, the global variable. A, um, um, you know, let's see, the host is host, a user is user, um, the password is pass. And then the, I think that's it, right? The DB. DB is DB. Okay, I'm using the default here. So if you don't provide any of this of these drivers, then we're going to use the default, which is coming from directly from this list. Okay, and then we're going to pass it to our DSN. For DSN, uh, you need the, the driver, uh, the host user, and the, um, the DB. Well, not the user. I mean, just the driver, the host, and the DB port number and so on, but mainly just all that's all we need. So I'm going to pass to this uh, setter uh, the the driver and uh, the DB. And um, I think maybe that's just those two. Yeah, well, OK, let's see. So let's go to our driver function down here. When we set the driver, I'm going to pass in uh, not the DSN but um, pass in a driver, pass in the um, uh, database. Let's call it DB for short. And when you set it, right, when you set it, um, I think you need a host too, yeah. Let's pass in the host as well. Okay, so when you set it, it says, Instead of doing this way, I'm going to say um, it's going to be the driver is um, concatenate that with the colon, and then the driver 
would be the DB name is equal to I just do this with a double quotes. I'm more accustomed to that. And then the DB and then concatenate it again with the the host. And the host will be just the host. Okay, so that's our DSM. And then we're going to um, return that to the connection. So let's go and write a function here. Function connect. All right, so the connection is going to be I'm going to try just to make sure we capture, capture all the errors. Capture exception, um, E here, and then we just throw an error. Um, we can just say echo, well, something went wrong. Could not connect. And echo another friendly message. I say maybe error. So we know what the error is. Okay, so E get message. Okay, so that's done. Now in the connection, so we, now we're going to do a this PDO. Okay, points to equal the new PDO. And then here we have four parameters. As you can see, the list here is the DSN. So we're going to get, get the DSN. We get that. And then we need to put in the user. Um, yeah, the user, let's put user here. And then this is the password. Let's pass that to this user and password connection. And then password. OK. And then once we get that, then we check to see if there's any error. So if no error, if PDO has no error, then we are good. That means we can go ahead and I mean, if this if it's false, it has an error, right? We could throw a new error, and we just say something like um, "cannot uh, connect." Okay, um, we do that, and then I think that's it. If it's all good, then we are good to go. So that should make the connection, right? So we pass the DSN, the user and password, and then we can make the connection. And we invoke that automatically when we do a new DB inside that a config class. So uh, this purchase mod is done for that one. Now let's go over here and then create a function um, to, well, maybe we'll, yeah, let's, let's write a function to get um, all records. We need one for that. Need another function to um, insert, right? Insert a record. And then we also need a function to delete. So I'll use the truncate, um, truncate uh, table. And then we need a table name, so we pass that to the table, truncate table function. We'll do that truncation in there. Um, you also need the table to retrieve and the table to insert. Okay, so those two are, I think that's all we need for that one. Um, we insert, you also need the data, right? I'm just doing, you know, as I go. So I think that's what we need for our three main functions. We basically just do those. And then, um, so let's get a record first, the easier one. The get records is pretty simple. So basically, you make the query is select all from the table. Okay, that's all we have to do. We're not, we're not passing any other parameters here, so just do that. And then we're just going to return the query, which is going to say this PDO. And we're going to make the query right away. And the PDO is going to call the query. Looks very similar to the uh, MassQLI query. Okay, it will return a um, statements. And then that's for that. That's it for that one. Um, the truncate is quite simple. So let's do that first. 
OK is um, query is going to be uh, truncate the table called table. OK, again, the difference between truncate and delete is that you would wipe out the data and you reset the ID field back to one. OK, if you just do a delete, then the ID field is remained um, unchanged. Wherever, wherever you left off, it's going to start from there. So I want to just basically, you know, start from from uh, one every time. So again, very similar. Okay, so that is for the truncate and the uh, get record. The insert would be a little bit um, uh, take a little bit more effort, but we can do that as well. We insert in data now. What data is coming in? Remember that data is coming in from the text file that from the stocks. Um, Right? When we read this text file, we're going to read every line. Each line comes in, and then we just insert the company name, the stock symbol, the sector, and then the price. We're going to ignore the ID here. This is just for our information here, but we can do that. We don't need to pass in the data, uh, the data, um, I mean the um, ID. So we can do it in a couple of ways in here. Um, one is we can have a list of all parameters. This would be like a list of all the uh, keys. So the first one is going to be a null value, the first field, right? Then the second one is going to be the uh, company name. So in this case, if you build a data, I'm going to come in the form of an array. So we can get the first element of the data and then the data of the second element um, position or third position and then data of uh, third and then this is the data of the price which is the fourth okay that's our uh, those are the actual variables all the data you need to pass to the placeholders okay so here's the placeholder it's going to be in here so the query is going to be um, insert into the table called table and then the values right it's going to be here is where we put all these parameters. Now you can use uh, two methods. You can use the um, you know the PDO method using the colon followed by the name of a variable name. For example, here would be something like um, uh, well the first one is is null, so you can put here it doesn't matter ID and then followed by the uh, company name like that, right? If you want, that's that's just fine. This is, has a really a good semantic uh, a feel to it because you know exactly what you want. Okay, uh, or you can use the question mark using the MySQLite and syntax. So it's shorter, but if you do this way, just make sure you know exactly which one goes which position. So this is similar to you know the uh, printf function where you would use a placeholder for that position. So the order here is important. The first value must be whatever this one is, second, and so on. So since I already have this way, I'm going to use the question mark and make my code a bit shorter. And then we replace those inside the uh, query and, and then the prepare statement. Um, we execute. So we got that. So notice here, right, we don't execute it because when you run it, uh, this is how it uh, safeguards your code from uh, SQL injection because it does not execute this right away. It sends the information, the uh, instructions first, and then it sends the data after that. So there's no way for the database to execute when we receive this statements here. As you can see, there's nothing, there's no data to insert. Okay, so then now we can go ahead and then do a, a statement um, prepare. So I'll do here the PDO prepare. We'll call the prepare and then we're going to prepare the query. Okay, once you do that, then we can go ahead and then execute it. And then we're going to return that execution back. So there will be the statement um, and then here just execute. Okay, the whole word execute. This is not the same as the execute in PDO. PDO uses P uses just the X E X E C. The statement class uses the execute. Okay, and then so that's a, a difference there. Just make sure. I know a little bit tricky, but just have to kind of get used to it. And you pass in the parameters. Okay, again, you could do it. Um, you could put all these in here if you want manually, but I happen to do this way. It's just nicer because I know exactly what goes where, and you code it's cleaner this way. But you could just, you know, copy and paste all these in here. Make sure it matches um, each of these positions here. Okay. 
So I think that's all we need for this insert statement. All right. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much done for our database. Again, later on when we make the, act the actual um, query, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we we'll always come back and fix it. And then last thing we're gonna do here is go to config file and then include in here uh, the um, query, I mean the, the database. So let me just put up here, doesn't matter where, but I like to put it on top here. So it's gonna be new DB and then we'll not pass any default data to it. I mean, custom data, we just use the default here. And I think that's it for this one. And uh, so when we make this index over here, we just make sure we, um, you know, pull the correct formation and so on. So let's just run my code and just to make sure everything is still working as before. Okay. Make sure there's no error. Yeah, so we are good. Okay, so I'll stop here. And then in the next video, we're going to go and then I read a text file and pass that over to the database.